So, hello everybody, welcome to episode 51 of uh, Customer Experience R&R &R with my good self, Richard Knight. And my even more excellent self, Mr. Rianne Huxtable. Uh, oh, oh, talk to, blimey, get you, bigging yourself up. Bigging, well, that must, that must go along with the fact that you've been out there blogging uh, onto that there LinkedIn stuff. You said it, you said it. So, uh, yeah, I've been blogging. You've been blogging, throwing, throwing a few little, um, uh, oh, little curveballs out there, causing a few little waves. I hear when people have been chatting to you about this whole customer experience stuff. So, well, what, what was the trigger of it? If those people haven't had the chance to read it on LinkedIn, uh, what, 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 what's the viewers missing and the listeners? Well, missing? you know, we've all been. It's been August, and I know we're now. We're now. If you're listening to this, we're recording this on the first of the month, first of September, but. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, will, along with your lovely families, have um, had a staycation this year. You might have uh, been down to our sunny part of the world, up in Cornwall, or to Richard's lovely part of the world in Dorset and Wiltshire, where I went on holiday. It was very nice. Um, or indeed, you might have been up to the Capital to uh, visit the Queen, although she's in Scotland, isn't she? But anyway, um, so yeah, so I just thought I'd share my thoughts. Um, about some of the experiences that I had on on my holiday, particularly when I went when I went to London, so um, it really builds on. Um, I, I read a blog a few uh, last month in July about um, uh, making sure that if you've got hybrid working, you're looking after your customers. And this blog was really about, you know, has you know how much longer are the British public going to have to put up with with poor with poor service experience? And there were a couple of things that really triggered it, Rich. Um, and I know you've read it, um, so you know, feel free to pile in. But the first one was was booking the train. Yeah, fairly straightforward. You go, I've got a GWR app, went on to the GWR app to book my train from Newton Abbott into Paddington. And um, there was a, a, a fare that came up for the three of us, um, sorry, for seven of us in total, um, but for, for two families of three and a, and a, and a four. And it was a good price, it was £163 uh, per family. It wouldn't, every time I went through to book it, um, the, put my card details in and it kept coming up, uh, booking suspended. And I had three, well, actually, I tried it three times, three suspended transactions on my, on my debit card uh, for 163 quid. So I was a little bit annoyed, um, which then created uh, the next moan which was, how do I get hold of somebody, somebody. to sort this out? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, a fair play to Great Western Railway. They make it virtually impossible to find a telephone number. Um, <laughs> it's uh, there. It's buried. It's buried. Websites, very small at the bottom. It's, it's with the terms and conditions. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> much, much like, I mean, I, I, think, I think businesses have got into the, um, the, this game called Let's hide and go seek the customer service <laughs> number from customers. Um, so, so it was impossible to try and ring someone to find out whether I was actually going to be charged um, the best part of nearly £500 for yeah. a £60 pound ticket. So uh, what I did was I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. I jumped in the old car, drove to the station, uh, went to the ticket desk and I met a lovely lady there who I said I wasn't the first person that had been in to sort this out with her um, and she actually um, she apologized she was very lovely and she found me an even better price uh, of oh, 30 right. pounds each return um, so what was a 162 pound uh, ticket became just a, just under 100 um, and it got me thinking I thought well you know why 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 are businesses making it that difficult you know why why is nobody sitting and, and going through these client and customer journeys to find out whether they work or not. Yeah. I, I mean, you must have had similar frustrating things with trying to find a bloody telephone number. Oh, no, no, exactly the same. I'll tell you what, the one thing that we've had recently, actually, is my daughter is uh, uh, 17 and has applied for her provisional licence to start driving, get out into the big bad world of driving cars, very excited. Back in, ju in June, she um, sent off the information, they took the payment and she hadn't heard anything until yesterday 
when it did eventually arrive. And that was way beyond. And they they were saying on their website, um, you know, we've got uh, it's going to be um, eight to ten weeks. Leave it eight to ten weeks before contacting us. So, you know, fair play to DVLA from that point of view. They've given you they've set an expectation, which is fine. So my daughter dutifully waited that until the 10 weeks were gone. And we're actually on the 12 week point now. And she thought, OK, great. So 10 weeks have gone. I will get in contact with them like they've asked me to. Can Could she? No. Emails sent off, never replied to. Phone number. She could find the phone number. Message. We're very busy at the moment. Thank you for your call. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely so, fantastic. So yeah, my first my first tip from the blog <laughs> don't play hide and go seek for your telephone number for your clients because that really, really annoys them. Really annoys people. <laughs> and then and then kind of on the then we when we got to London, um we had a, we had an interesting experience with Airbnb, but we won't, I won't even go down that rabbit hole because we'd be here for literally this podcast would be, <laughs> would, would be on for hours. Um, but let's say today I had to move from the Airbnb to a hotel. But anyway, moving on, um, we uh, we had we booked a couple of meals out. Um, so we went to Chinatown one night, and we went to the Rainforest Cafe. And uh, you know, this is this is look, this is a, a huge generalisation. There are lots of lovely, lovely, lovely restaurants um yeah. cafes with lovely people in mm -hmm. but not just where but not where i was they were all you know really miserable really didn't want to be there um you know we're fed up um we went into this chinese in uh in, in chinatown and my son was so excited oh, daddy we're in chinatown and all the lights were out and all the restaurants you know it was, your ducks being cooked it was amazing you know just really it's a great cultural experience anyway we went we there was lots of chinese restaurants to, to choose from we unfortunately chose the one with the grumpiest staff going. Um, <laughs> it, it, it took ages to get a drink. And then yep. um, there was no smile. There was no recognition. There was no, you know, even, you know, recognition of the kids. You know, how are you? You know, excited about you having a Chinese. Do you want to use chopsticks? All those great things that, you know, um, are, are exciting for the kids. And yep. um, anyway, the food was very nice. The service was, was really poor, grumpy, couldn't be bothered attitude. Um, but but what happened afterwards really took me by surprise. And I, you know, you and I are a bit long in the old tooth now for the old, in the old customer experience game. <laughs> but fair play to the, the brass neck of this particular business because they put yeah. a 12.5% service charge on <laughs> the bill. And um, was, was that, was that um, did you have to look down the bill to find that? Like you'd had to find the phone number as well. Did they yeah, uh, keep right, that yeah, a, a very small print yeah. at the bottom? Yeah. And, and to be honest, Rich, I'm a little bit sceptical about what happens to that 12 and a half percent. Does it really yeah. go to the, the staff? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who actually, if they've done a great job, I, I, you know, I would be more than happy to, to leave them a, a, a tip. Yeah. So uh, I asked for it to be removed. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the manager got even more grumpy. Um, oh. So I then insisted <laughs> that it was removed and told him why I insisted it would be removed. Um, but you know what? The same thing happened the following night. We went to Rainforest Cafe, and um, although it wasn't half as bad as, as Chinatown, um, you know, it wasn't great. You had to wait, and um, the guy we had was very pleasant. But then we ordered a bottle of wine, and it turned up with plastic cups. Um, oh, food, you know, again, just twelve and a half percent put on the on the bill. I said, I'm, I'm really yeah. sorry. You know, I'm, I'm not paying. I, I refuse to pay that. So anyway, my build is <laughs> right. I want to start a movement, and my movement yes. is. Do not pay for rubbish service. Refuse. Do not leave yep. a tip. Do not Absolutely. pay a service charge. Because people yep. have got to realise, yeah, look, I get everyone's had a difficult time in the hospitality sector, and some still are. And and I, and you know, we've all had difficult times running businesses, haven't we? Yep. You know what, guys? You're open now. You're back trading. You need to give it at least a smile. At least but, pretend you're happy to see us, you know? Absolutely. But I, th I think it's something that goes across every sector. You know, we've all had a we've all had a, a really hard time of it and we're going to have continue to have challenges, aren't we? However, if we are in a mood, if we are not on the right uh, in, in, in the right mood for interacting with people, even if you're working in a solicitors or at a, um, a building supplies organization, you know, that picking up the telephone, that smile that you can hear. Yes, it is true. You can hear smiles down the telephone. 
they are really really important it makes a massive difference little things all these small things that add up to make an experience that people will talk about or have a good old moan about like my revered colleague here who uh who hey have you ever thought what the common denominator is with all of these activities mate you know and your yeah, and, and the bad the bad experiences I and mean, it's yeah. you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's me and you know <laughs> and it, it, it is a bit of a busman's holiday you know whenever i go out yeah um, you know because that's kind of what we do isn't it but yeah. you know it was so particular but you know what um we went to the theater and we went to the first night of, of mary poppins uh was, was was back on and do you know what? it was it was just completely the opposite you know the, the staff were pleased to see you yeah. uh the, the actors and actresses thanked us for coming yeah you know they were physically moved they were back working again and and, it, and I felt really emotional that I, I you know I in some small way had spent a small fortune uh, in the theatre to go, but that's not the yep. point. Um, it was a holiday, <laughs> but in reality, you know, it felt like an experience. The kids loved it, and it was such an amazing experience. Uh, yeah. And it was just those little things, as you point out, Rich, that make such a difference. You know, the yeah. thank you, the smiles, that you know, um, even when we were queuing for the bar to get a drink, uh, one of the tills had gone down. The manager came round, apologised to everyone. He said, "I'm really, really sorry." We, got an issue with this till it's our opening night again i'm sure and everyone was like yeah that's fine you know don't, don't yeah. worry about it but yeah, yeah it, it's um yeah so that's that's my my blog moan this month go read but, it have a look but yeah. please pay for bad service because you know what if we don't complain if we don't let these organizations know that it's not all right not to have a have a line to call up when you when there's a problem you know it's not all right to yeah. put 12 percent charge on when 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 your service is not great uh it's not okay it's not okay um you yeah, know absolutely. Up this. yeah absolutely and uh, you know you've got to make sure you keep asking your customers how how they're feeling about these things because a lot of the time as you mentioned businesses aren't actually looking at the journey that their customers are going on you know they're not spending the time and if they're busy absolutely you know but there are other ways and means of doing that hello um you know of, of gathering that insight and making sure you can see what's going on and making tweaks where necessary and it might be as simple as explaining to somebody at the start of a conversation the issues you've got or the the reduced service or whatever it is because we're all reasonable people you know if we understand and we're given forewarning and information uh we are more likely to uh, accept uh, or be more accepting and, and move forward so uh, so it's really key and i you know i think your blog has uh, has hit a chord with a lot of people on linkedin as ryan said please do uh, take the opportunity to go and have a look at that ryan huxtable um on linkedin just find him up there as a CX uh, ex expert that he is, that he is. So brilliant. Well, a little bit of review of a blog there, slight change to our normal format. Um, I think we're going to be doing this a little bit more. Is that right, Mr. Mr. Uh, yeah, well, you know, we thought maybe we share what we're up to on LinkedIn or wherever, yeah. you know, where we're talking about this stuff because, you know, um, our podcast is really about sharing best practices and it? it's about encouraging everyone to, to focus yeah. what's important. And, you know, to your point, Rich, I do think there are, there are some basics you just got to get back to in business now. There are some basic things around just, you know, smiling, thanking, the smiling down the phone that you mentioned, you know, um, being a little bit grateful for the fact people might be turning up to your establishment and spending some money with you, um, you know, and, and thanking them for doing that. So, you know, this isn't, you know, this isn't client journey mapping. This isn't, you know, uh, this isn't rocket science we're talking about here. This is, no, this is getting exactly. the basics back in place. So um, have a go, guys, you know, some of you, been close for 18 months so you know at least look at least pretend you're happy to see us hey eh? eh? <laughs> even if ryan walks through the door go yeah. on give him a smile right well i think i think that's enough warbling for today uh i've been rich knight i've been ryan huxtable have a great week <laughs>